Showtime! start this one off to my <laughs> bud Skook here I was six seven years old my dad was the coach of the team Skook was on it Skook was my favorite player everybody in coach so loves Skook and he was my favorite player but I was a little bratty kid hanging around the locker room causing trouble and one day Skook <laughs> when my dad was not around took that white athletic tape and I was a little kid and he taped me to the wall of the locker room. <laughs> well, my feet about two or three feet up off the ground, and he taped me there, and I couldn't move. I was taped to the wall of the locker room. The door. The door. He was taped to the door. I taped you. Yeah, he was the 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 wall. I was there. That's right. No, not on the ground. outside. Yeah. So when you open it up, he, that was Scotty. He was <laughs> taped to the locker room and door. And it was uh, Nate Computo. Nate, Nate Computo, Computo and Scoogie. Take me to the, and the door Mr. of the locker said, room. Mr. Curry said, hey, wait, see Scotty? Where's Scotty? <laughs> Have you seen him? No, <laughs> oh, we don't know. We, we, oh, no, we wouldn't tell him. <laughs> when did you find out they did it? Uh, I think I, somebody said, you better go down and get your son. He's taped to the wall. <laughs> so, I think I went down and got untaped. <laughs> True story. Oh, you know. I, true, story. true story. Yeah. That's a great wall. story. And yeah. here it's, you sit. Huh? Yeah. Well, Skoogie, you have a lot of experiences at the plus show. Well, you, you all do, but you, you had a story you wanted to share about the plus show? I know. When you... <laughs> uh, because, I don't know, we had, a, we had a surprise. We have one of our players, John Henderson. We call him Bus. Bus. Now, mind you, Bus was, he was the man on the bench. I never seen guy wrap up on the bench with five or six towels because he knew he wasn't gonna get in the game. <laughs> he got into the game, and one of the difference was two guys, Mark Sweet and John Henderson. Matter of fact, the coach from UConn wanted to know who are these two guys here, <laughs> and and Rip had to tell him who they were and whatnot. But yeah, yeah I mean, they, yeah. and what Kobe and Rip they they did their I mean. Rip made a move right now, and I got to look at it twice in slow motion. I never seen it. He went from from a right hand, I mean left hand to right hand, took it around, and somehow he brought it back again and laid the thing up. I never seen that move. <laughs> Kobe's team was a was an alley oop. I thought they were gonna stop the game because the people in, in the place were nuts. <laughs> the alley oop, and he boom backwards. Do you think that the palestra is just? kind of one of those iconic places to see a basketball game. It is the iconic place. There's no place There is no other palestra. Tell everyone no. what the, who is not from Philadelphia what the palestra is. The palestra was built in 1926. It is the oldest continuing basketball arena in the country. They've renovated it many times. Matter of fact, I thought they ruined it. Right. They made it nice. <laughs> they made it nice. <laughs> it used to be terrible. Nobody wanted to come into the palestra. I remember the Texas coach, when they asked him if he was coming back to the palestra, he said, oh, did they put lights in there now? <laughs> <laughs> because it was it was pretty bad. It is a wonderful place to see a basketball game. There's no place like the palestra. And that belongs to the University of Pennsylvania, which is being five. Court. It does. Mm -hmm. More, uh, more college basketball games there. have been played at the palestra than any gymnasium in the world. That's right. Yes. They posted because of high school games and college games, and when the Big Five, all the Big Five teams used to play there, NCAA playoff games. The stat I saw is there's been more games played at the Plester than anywhere else. We're leaving Coastal to go down to the game. The traffic was unbelievable. Our guys had to change on the bus. Yeah, mm -hmm. I remember that. Our yeah. players had to change on the bus. For the, the second. Uh, when Skog was head coach, the district semifinals when I played Lower Marion down there, yeah. the yeah. traffic, because I did not go on the bus that night. I drove down myself, and I got to the palestra. Game time was 7, I'm saying, and when I got there like 6.45, no, mm -hmm. 6.15, 45. I walked in. There was not a seat in the house. 45 minutes before the start of the game, there were 8,500 people in the palestra. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There was not a seat to be. 
seat to be had an hour before game time. Everyone was there to see Kobe and Rip. Everyone was there. Everybody knew. They knew. The, the they word, the word was history. out. Come Kobe see Kobe and, and Rip. Coach Sol, Lower Marion. Plester was packed an hour before game time. And the second game was... P.W. Chester. P.W. and Chester, yeah. <laughs> Trust me, when our game was finished, half, half, of, half, half of it left, didn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Plester left. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Right. Mm -hmm. Then we get right. in there, and the guys ran off the bus. We had to get in. They, they were actually going to forfeit the game. That's the word that we got, because they thought we were going to be late. Seriously. Yeah. And then, you're talking about a tight locker room? No. The little stall? Oh, yeah. That's how we changed. I never seen a locker room like that in my life. Yeah. <laughs> We didn't, but mm -hmm. and then uh, then we had our warm ups and the rest is history. But I, I tell you what, I I wouldn't change anything again in okay. life for the game, but most of all for the start that we had that I know I had. It, it was so much. We we uh, I remember when Mr. Kersey came on, right? You want to know. It is, it's the basketball team. We used to play down what Columbia Avenue. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, he was the man. Terry he came Smith. in. He said, oh, we all knew about it, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. And uh, and then we had to make a decision because a lot of guys are playing football. So when they they couldn't come out until after the Thanksgiving game. Smart. Right. Mm -hmm. He was talking about conditioning. That was it. Cross country. Mm -hmm. Start running because they knew we were gonna press. We're going to press you as soon as you get off the bus. It's a curse. You tell us that. It's got to tell you. Mm -hmm. That's that's how intense Coach Bill was. If you didn't get there early, forget it. You don't get in. That's right. They had a line from all the way down to Sandy's drugstore <laughs> on the other side. He had to come out of, out of Scott, down, bang. I mean, ever seen that's how we. That's how intense the games were. I still remember all the games that we lost, JV game and the, and the varsity games. And in and in in Scott, if you had and you got there early, they took the coat off. Mm -hmm. Threw it's, my it's, it's higher than this <laughs> right now. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. what they do. Yeah. But it was just, I thank this man. He, he, he gave me consideration for thoughts. He's always been there for me. And, and, I, and I appreciate that to the bottom of my heart. To Scotty also. It's like a, a brother to me. And, and for them to grow up, but they, they made a difference. And I tell you that from the bottom of my heart. Mm -hmm. I appreciate you. I appreciate everything you did to help me grow as a man and as a young man. So with that, I love y'all. <laughs> That's beautiful. And you were a brother to him. You even tortured him like a brother by taping him to <laughs> I the saw the tape burns on my wrist. <laughs> <laughs> uh, scarred for life still. Thanks a lot, buddy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you, uh, was there a statute of limitations on the tape? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that was fun. We thanks so much for sharing. Yeah. And that concludes this special <laughs> bonus <laughs> feature. <laughs> yes. Stories told, previously untold, here on the Rosie and Bill Show. Thanks for joining us.